do it again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but once you start going, you're just like. <laughs> okay, so it goes it's back in the zone. <laughs> yeah. Camera face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to our podcast, inspiring more women to join Octopus in engineering roles. My name is Zoe Geddes and this is Octopus Energy's Women in Engineering. So joining us today, we have Mel and Loren. They're both EV engineers. And we also have Jess, who joined us a year ago as a smart meter engineer, but is currently in your second day of your new job as a regional coach. Massive congratulations for the new job. Thank you. Incredible. So how are we all feeling, ladies? Good. Good. Yeah, nice. Amazing. Right, well, we'll get into it then, because I would love to know what inspired you to become engineers. So um, I used to work in an office environment. I used to work for British Gas. Um, I did an experience week with them after working with my brothers. So um, I did a few weeks with them, just toddling about. Um, and then when I went back to the office, it just... I felt like that wasn't me anymore. It felt like that's what I wasn't supposed to do. So when I did the experience week on the boilers, um, I just, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I just think um, having to think about things, it wasn't just repetitive, constant tapping on the computer all the time, sitting at a desk and just doing the same thing. Um, and I loved that side of it. Um, and I don't think I'll ever go back to being in an office. I don't ever want to do it. So my brothers and definitely doing the experience week changed my whole, my whole view of it. I think I thought, do I want to work with the men? Do I want to be in that environment? But then once you get into it, it's not being around the men, you know, it's more about what you can do and what you're going to do on that job. And it's not about everybody else. It's, it's what you are doing. And that's, that's what it was for me. I loved it. And what about you guys? How did you get into engineering? I got into it by, I guess, just wanting to do something different. I, um, I always grew up hearing my granddad say, you know, get a tray behind you. And I thought, oh, I did kind of think at the start, oh, can I, can I really do that? And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And I think when I was looking at going to colleges and everything at 16, I couldn't really think of anything that felt like fully me and what I wanted to do with my life, which is already a hard decision to make at 16 anyway. And then I thought, you know what, I will get trade, but I didn't really want to be a plumber. So I thought, oh, let me just be an electrician. And then it kind of just blossomed from there really. Um, so yeah, that's what got me into it. Incredible. Jess? I guess mine's similar to both in ways. I sort of grew up being more practical, I guess, bit of a tomboy, always getting involved with helping my dad do like housework and, and bits around the house. But it wasn't until I saw an advert specifically asking for women to get involved in the trade that I thought, actually. So the point of this podcast is to inspire women to get into the industry. Um, and I think it would be really great for female listeners out there to find out a little bit more about what experiences you've had specifically as women in the industry. Most of my experiences have been really positive, especially since being with Octopus. A lot more of them have been positive compared to the past. Unfortunately, there is still a few people that hold the mindset that a woman shouldn't be doing this kind of job and they're not capable of doing this kind of job um, which is quite sad but they are few and far between and I've not had that in the past year so since I've joined Octopus I've not heard anyone say anything like that mm. but at previous places I've been refused jobs I've turned up and they've gone you're not doing it you're a woman but again those instances are very few and far between and the amount of people I get now when I turn up they're like oh my god you're a woman. There's like a woman engineer. I'm like, yeah, you're yeah. Like, hi there. Yeah. Like, we do exist. I'm here. <laughs> and then they're like, good on you. Like, yeah. go for a girl. And, and the older generation, especially, I think they like it because they see you doing something that they didn't have the opportunity to do when they were younger. And they're like, yeah, I'm living through you at the minute. Go for it. So I would say, especially in, in recent times, it's, it's been really good compared to the past. 
Yeah, mm. I've heard you saying yes as well. It sounds yeah. like you've had similar experiences. I think it, it's massively, um, it has massively changed and every day is different, I think, and every customer is different. So every experience is different. Some people will react in a negative way, but then you'll go to the next person and they're like, oh my God, I love it, it's so great. And it just makes you forget about that last person because you're like, well, you didn't like it, but you love it. So I'm here for you. And it also makes single women who have been in DV and experienced that side of things just make them feel more comfortable. And I think that for me is, I mean, I, not to go too deep, but I just think I love that for the women that they can feel comfortable and that they have an option for a woman to come into their house rather than feeling like they need to lock themselves in another room while the man's doing whatever they're doing. And you can just see sometimes the absolute relief that they're like, oh, this is nice, you know. And, and I think even having the option of saying to them, do you have female engineers? And it's like, yeah, we do actually. Yeah. You know, I, I, like, I like that. So every experience is different, every customer is different, but it's, it's great. I agree with both of you as well like every experience is different and through every co company I've worked at I've had like positive and negative experiences and through that experience it makes me really value the good experiences so like here at Octopus like I've not felt any sort of uncomfortableness or like that I didn't belong here like it's felt so welcoming and like it's it's surprising because I remember saying to someone um they're like oh what's it like and I'm like oh everyone's nice which it, you yeah. sh it shouldn't be so strange to say yeah. but everyone is really nice and even the guys are just so encouraging and they're just like it's just so respectful whereas in in other places it has been a bit like oh you know, there is always that little thing like that you can you can sense at the back of your mind, which is like, mm, can she actually do it? And it's like you always feel like you've got to prove a point. And I, I mean, through all of this, I've I love proving a point. I love it. Like it really gets me. Like I'm like, well, yeah, I can do it. And that's that's I guess my experience getting to this point is just I look at it overall so positively. And this is like kind of where I'm supposed to be, really. So yeah. I do think we still have a way to go though like you say you have to prove a point yeah. wouldn't it be great to walk into a room and automatically have respect because yeah. we can do the job and we are competent yeah. Um, so yeah maybe that's a little room for improvement so uh, would you say that the perception of women in engineering has changed over the years 100% 100% we still have a long way to go but I feel the positive change as like is coming and it's just a work in progress like you know anything where it's not the norm is going to take a while to break through this like what's the word sort of society's like boundaries I guess it's completely the wrong word but I think yes it has improved um I just think it, you know, there needs to be more girls because it is so, it's so normal. Like it, here, it feels normal. Yeah. It doesn't feel like, oh, like I am going to be the only girl when I walk in the room. Like it's not, it doesn't feel like that. So yeah, definitely changed for the better. The older generation grew up in a world where women did this, men did that. So, and and that's kind of how they grew up. So then as things are changing, they're not so easy to be like, oh, well, are we gonna change that? Whereas the younger generation are growing up with women already in it. So they're not like, oh, does a woman actually do that? Because they're used to it. Yeah. So it's just, it's that, that crossover between the, the two. Um, and it's gonna be there for a little while, but we just have to, keep working on it you know and I feel like the more women that come into it it won't be so like oh a woman can do this you know because it'll be the norm. That's it I mean there was a time when it was very uncommon to have a female doctor or a female yes. lawyer like if you yeah. if you was assigned a female doctor you wouldn't even raise an eyebrow now so yeah um, or even just... males in, in nursing yeah. you know it wasn't yeah. normal for a male to be a nurse because if women did that, you know, it. so yeah. It just takes a while to promote change yeah. and I guess that's the journey that we're part of right now. It's quite an exciting time, to be honest. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It is. So would you say that you've had much support from your male colleagues? Uh, yeah, I definitely feel supported by um, my fellow male engineers. I feel like, um, like because 
like starting this off like I was only 16 and it was you know like it, I was just surrounded by guys so it was very different but I like growing up I was a tomboy and stuff so it's quite what I was used to um and of course like yeah, supportive here, even through training other people. You know, like like Mel said, like people call on me now, which is strange because the guys are older than me as well, which is quite weird. Um, even like turning up to, to jobs and everything, you know, they're like, like they've they've said themselves, you know, like, oh no, I'm, I'm actually training right now. And the customer's been like, well, okay. Like, because I, I look significantly younger, but yeah, I do feel so supported here, um, especially here. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's a nice place to be. Amazing. And you're going to feel the same, aren't you? Like with your new role as a coach. Uh, yeah, it's going to be yeah. the roles reversed in a way. Yeah, I guess still coming from an engineering background, the, the girls have hit it on the head pretty much. There's a sense of belonging, I think, which someone said earlier, and it does almost feel like everyone is your family because they're all so supportive. You know, you can always ring someone if you need anything. And likewise, people ring me. And then, yeah, I guess going into the, the new role, which is still fresh, it's going to be a different change again, which I'm going to have to adapt to and get used to. So we'll see what's to come of that. Amazing. Um, so next question, um, I want you guys to keep it real here because it's really important that listeners who are thinking about getting into the industry like really know what they're up against so um in terms of what still needs to improve i know we've come a long way but like what would you say needs to change to improve things like you said i think we have come a long way but there is still stuff that needs to be done and for me i think one of the biggest things is visibility yeah from a younger age especially knowing that it's an option before college and university. So like we've spoke about before, Oxford's going to career days and, and doing talks at schools with a female being there. Yeah. So that other females, you know, they look at the stand and they think, oh, there's a woman there. Let me go up opposed to it being two men. When I was there, I was like, oh, I'm, I can't go over there. There's, there's two men there. So to have a woman there flying the flag, I think it'll open a lot of doors and open a lot of eyes for the younger generation to then get into it. But also social media is a massive thing these days, like Instagram, mm. TikTok, you know, TV adverts and stuff. You don't see many women on those type of job roles and seeing women in those roles, I think will spark a lot of conversations that need to be had and should have probably been had anyway, so that more women get into it. And like this podcast is a massive step in, in the right direction and it'll open massive. a lot of ears and eyes as to, you know, what we can do and what we have been doing and what other people can do if they want to yeah yeah i completely agree definitely it's all about representation like even like here today as like a person of color like it's you know it's like it's it, there's not a lot of women and there's if you go even deeper there's not a lot of people of color in this trade as well so i feel like it's all about showing that it is normal and that we're here and we've been here for a while now like i've, mm -hmm. I've met people that have been started off I knew an engineer she was in her 50s and she'd been going for it for years so it's it's like wow like and I never knew that and it's like you know it's all about representation and showing that we are here and it's acceptable so yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 showing them the good and the bad and allowing them to make a choice from that because not everything is rosy so you kind of have to give them a whole picture um, and let them decide from that. But the negatives will never outweigh the positives for me. The positives will always prevail, 100%. Um, but I think you've, you've got to show girls the whole picture rather than just a girl on a screen with a screwdriver. Yeah. Because that's not realistic, you know what I mean? You need to show them what's actually involved. And in order to do that, we need to show them from a younger level that they can get into it. And I think, we, we, I mean, when I go to my daughter's school, one of the girls in year 10 asked me if she could do the, the work experience with us. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. But then I spoke to Oxford, obviously it's not something that we could do, but just even that is, is massive, you know what I mean? We need to be talking to the girls from a younger age and showing them that your only option isn't health and beauty and social care. You have other options and you're able to do it. You might not think you're strong enough, but over time you will just naturally 
grow that muscle you'll be able to pick up that tall bag and, and you'll be able to do it i think i think a lot of the the thought process is can i work with men and can i pick up the tall bag I'm on my own most of the time. I don't know if you girls agree, but I'm on my own most of the time. I'm in my little van tootling around and I love life. And I couldn't pick up my tool bag when I first started. Goodness me, it drove me back there. But over time, it's just got heavier and I've naturally just managed to do it. So you you can do it 100%. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with that. Because I remember even starting like myself and it's the self-doubt. Yes. It is major self-doubt yeah. being like, oh, can I? And you've just got to push through yeah. because you can, you can do anything. Anyone can do anything if you put your mind to it yeah. and you just believe in yourself yeah. and like have support of good people around you. And like, I think we were saying this earlier, actually, before like we came into this, that, you know, like not feeling strong, you know, women carry children. Like, come on, <laughs> yeah. you, like, but come on, yeah. yeah, of course we can do this. Like, you know, it's, it's like a, you, your body gets used to it. Yeah. 100%. I think as women, we, we maybe have a sense of imposter syndrome more in this kind of industry than, than men would yeah. because of the stereotypes, because of being a minority and, and maybe the doubt of some people and, and having to prove ourselves. Yeah. I think, again, we were speaking about it earlier. I, again, might be a personal thing, but also a, an imposter syndrome thing. I like to get everything perfect Yeah. because I feel like I have to get it perfect and it has to be 100% spot on for people to believe that I can do my job and do it well. And that probably isn't the case, but that's just how I feel as a minority in the situation. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, because my work's great. (laughs) It's just that thought process that that maybe women wouldn't know about coming into it to be aware of. It's like trying twice twice as hard to, to sort of prove that you are worth it, even though we don't have to, but even sort of doing that, then it just, I think it makes us better. It's not better, but like you care about the job more because you have, you feel like you have something to prove. Yeah. Yeah. Standards to uphold. Yes. I think you're absolutely smashing it. Um, I'd just love to say thank you so much for joining us today for this episode and telling people out there how it really is on the tools. Uh, Like your experiences are really valuable and hopefully we can inspire more women to get into this industry. So, um, yeah. We'll see you next time for the next episode of Octopus Energy's Women in Engineering.